Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to Artivism, the Power of Art for Social Transformation. Um, thank you, um, um, Hyun Su, for agreeing to be our artivist for today. Uh, we are sponsored by Adelphi University, Sync for Hope, and Goddessman Libraries, a teacher's college at Columbia University. Um, so today, we have Hyun Su, Alice Kim, and her class. Um, Ms. Kim is a multidisciplinary artist who actively works as a designer, a merchandiser, an engineer, entrepreneur, I think that's my favorite, researcher and educator. She holds a BFA textiles from RISD, an MS textile from Philadelphia University, AAAS fashion marketing from Parsons, and MA textile futures from C. SM in London, UK. She is currently a doctoral candidate, studio fellow, and an instructor in the art and art education program at Teachers College. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Professor RG, for the wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, I'll share my screen to begin. Give me a second. All right. Let me know if you can see the screen well. You're good? Okay. All right, we'll begin. Thank you everyone uh, for being here today. My name is Yonsu Alice Kim. I'll be, giving, I'll be giving a talk on reimagining fashion and art education as part of the lecture series, The Power of Art for Social Transformation. This event is a collaboration between Adelphi University, the Tessman Libraries at Teachers College, Columbia, and Sync for Hope. We have, uh, we have our class coming in, officially joining us today, Studio in Creative, Creative Technology class at Teachers College, co-taught by Autumn Lin and myself. This is one of the first textile-based digital fabrication class um, in Ivy League schools. So this is exciting. Um, and we have Professor RG who teaches at Adelphi, Adelphi and SVA. Uh, she teaches art myths science class, which uh, we have some students from her class. We actually have a survey. Um, if you guys can fill out um, during the presentation or after the presentation, I would really appreciate it. It's about the consumer, um, leather consumer survey. So I'm asking all of the participants or all of the audience if um, what their um, preferences are. So this, this talk is based on my chapter, Sustainable Leather and Holistic Education, a chapter in a book, Illuminations of Social Imagination, published in 2020. This book is inspired by late Maxine Green, who described her um, who described social imagination as the capacity to invent visions of what should be and what might be in our deficient society on the streets where we live and in our schools. Social imagination not only suggests but also requires that one take action to repair or renew. Green also asserted that social societal issues can be addressed through viewing art through a community perspective. So we are looking at two artworks of influential artists of our time, Banksy and Ai Weiwei. Banksy has been criticizing bureaucratic artwork by displaying and selling his work in random places, just like streets. He also shredded his own piece of art, the work that work that was just sold for 25.4 million as sold of his um, auction. On the right, we have Ai Weiwei, the internationally renowned artist activist, always makes, who ma always makes bold political statements through his sculpture, covering subjects such as global refugee crisis and his own Chinese government. My art and design practice also raises questions on social justice and sustainability, and I specialize on current leather production. While working with factories and manufacturers in developing countries as a merchandiser, both in New York and Seoul, 
I became aware of critical issues by, behind fashion and textile industries. So what impact does sustainable design practice and our education have on society? As an artist, designer, merchandiser, researcher, and educator, I kept asking myself these questions. So today I'm expanding the discussion to sustainable consumption and artivism for new times and its potential influence on our society. Ecological and social awareness. So I'm here, I'm stating um, current status of the leather production, uh, which highlights issues behind uh, leather production that has been taken for granted, forgotten and ignored by fashion industry and consumers. So this slide, next slide contains images that may be disturbing to viewers. So I'll let you know when I've been to the next slides. Um, so I'm gonna begin this slide with animal rights. Many millions of animals go through cruel treatment while they're alive. They're killed for their skin without any painkillers, mostly for better leather quality. Next slide. Environmental issues. While most leather products are consumed in the West, most leather tanneries are located in developing countries in the East. Leather manufacturing fa facilities have moved to developing countries to avoid increasing labor, increasing labor costs and strict laws on sewage treatment and use of toxic chemicals. Not only animals, but humans are suffering and dying from traditional leather production. The leather tannery and people in, living in town, um, leather tannery town share the same water resources which are used for drinking, dish, dishwashing, bathing, swimming, and water soiling. So it's not only impacting water quality, but also air and soil of their lands. Other issues include sweatshop, child labor, and no governmental support of better water or health infrastructures. As a result, people living in the tannery towns suffer from skin discoloration and lung diseases due to toxic chemicals. They also live far from medical facilities. Oftentimes they don't have easy access to the medical services. So I'm going to discuss my um, approaches as a merchandiser, designer, and engineer. My experience in design, engineering, marketing, and education led me to potential sustainable solutions to develop ways of producing alternative leather with a more socially responsible approach. I began with um, investigating this issue from merchandiser's perspective first. Realizing fashion and textile industries major concerns, such as time saving, saving time, saving costs, and serving cost, consumer demands in timely manner, my approach was to explore existing, existing and affordable technology that could be rapidly, rapidly applied to the current manufacturing process. The initial sustainable leather project presents three ways of sustainable production. First, cost-efficient, time-saving technology. Second, waste-free process. Third, chemical-free manufacturing process. First, I'm using laser cutting because laser cutting is known as the most sustainable and efficient fabric cutting technology currently exists. It takes about 30 minutes to cut four panels by hand, whereas you're seeing this um, four panels by hand, whereas laser cutter could you know, um, cut it within 30 seconds. Industrial leather tanning usually goes through multiple steps and requires vast amount of water and chemical, which also leaves extensive amount of waste during the processing. About 15% of fabric ends up in the trash during the pattern cutting process as well. 
However, I thought a well-planned pattern layout for laser cutting and sustainable bonding technique could reduce excessive textile waste. In terms of consumer demands, uh, findings from uh, focused interview data informed me that engineered animal skins could serve as a sustainable substitute as long as it maintains, maintains the unique aesthetic durability and valuable artifact standards that consumers desire. So through the survey, if you could um, give me more insights on consumer demands, it would be awesome. Thank you. Engagement as a designer and engineer. So I've been doing several projects named um, Sustainable Leather Project. Um, I'm, I'm gonna introduce you the first one for Sustainable Leather Project 2020. I used laser cutting and cutting laser um, fiber, natural fibers were laser cuts. And this is the result of it. Glued together with sustainable adhesives known as rice-based glue. For the sustainable leather project 2021, natural fibers were laser cut, physically attached together without using chemical adhesives. So it's chemical-free manufacturing process utilizing fiber property. All fibers were needle felted onto an additional translucent layer. Needle felting is a process which you can stack wool, water, wool fiber with felting needles. The, if this was at a manufacturing facilities, they would have a large needle felting machine. So this is the result. So wool and the other fabric layer were stacked together and both started to entangle and lock each other when it's stacked several times. So it's replacing the gluing part of the um, gluing and chemical part of the um, manufacturing process. For the Sustainable Letter Project 2022, I started to play with biofabrication. So it's an uh, extension of sustainable letter project that I've been doing, utilizing digital technology and fiber science. This process introduces ways to reduce toxic chemicals using textile production. So what's good about this um, biofabrication is it could be um, recycled. So this biopitin is made up of 100% organic materials, which can be dissolved into water with no harm. So it's, it doesn't create uh, water waste. Bioplastics requires three elements to create a layer, biopolymer, plasticizer, and solvent. And in this case, I used agar as biopolymer and glycerin as a plasticizer to bond um, solvent and biopolymer and solvent was water. And I'm also using sculpture, texa, um, sculpture technique, molding and casting technique to create extra layers and patterns. So this is the result of it. Engagement as an educator. So what impact does art and art education have on society? So these are, I'm gonna explain some of the trends that are uh, prevalent in education first. STEM education has been in trend in K-12 classrooms. And why is art important? R acts as a plasticizer that acts as a bonding material of STEM education. Same thing in higher education. Interdisciplinary education also emphasized the importance of interdisciplinary learning. Now, six steps of design process known as design thinking, um, the process that designs are most commonly using is now huge in other disciplines. 
like engineering and medical science as a method of creating problem solving process. So what it does is define a problem, ideate, you know, you create prototypes and through testing and creating samples, you implement. So it goes through several steps of um, making samples, critique, revision, and then launch. This process, of, this process of experiential learning and reflection is also proven to be an effective learning process, according to the permanent researchers in cognitive, cognitive development. Scholars in transformative learning also emphasize that importance of critical reflection and discourse, which are known as trials and critique in our design education. So my final thoughts, action as educators. So for the past 50 years, human activities have caused global warming and extinction of rare animal species. While natural resources that, are can, that cannot be replenished are vanishing at a rapid speed, there is little attention at the moment to environmental issues from society or education programs in schools. Manufacturers' uh, dramatic shifts to sustainable, pro sustainable production will, will only be possible when more and more cons consumers become aware of those issues and ban the consumption of those products created through unethical production by way of their shopping habits. Sheldon Berman asserted as educators, we must inspire young people to hold a positive vision of the future, to believe that we can do better, live better, be kinder, and be fairer. The idea of experiential learning and learning by doing is a major principle of progressive education movement in our education field. Progressive curriculum, which has been here for 100 years, emphasized the importance of experimental learning, interdisciplinary collaboration, and human-centered education. So I'm listing all these prominent educators, art educators, physicians, philosophers' names here, which you can reference to. John Andrew Rice of Flight Mountain College also advocated Dewey's, John Dewey's progress of education theory. John Andrew Rice also saw art as cru crucial subject that helps to prepare individuals for participation in a democracy. He argued through art experiences, students can come to the realization of the order in the world and by being synthesized to the movement, form, sound, and the other mediums of the art gets a firmer control of himself and his environment than is possible through purely intellectual efforts. Walter Gropius, the founder of Bauhaus, also believed that complete being is who understands inner relationship of the phenomena of the world and capable of incorporating his own personal share in the creative form. And to sum up, um, to best prepare students to be thoughtful and socially aware individuals, I believe schools should prioritize the social responsibility in the curriculum. The younger generation can take part in classroom activities and projects to think through these issues and eventually come up with the ways to prevent further pollution and find alternative ways to create substitutes. The more people brainstorm these critical problems together, the more sustainable solutions we will have. The earth does not belong to us. Animals were not created for us to wear. It is time for us to make the world better for every living creature on earth. So this is the end of the presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, 
You're welcome to type it in, in the chat box. I can stop share. And we also have survey. Uh, we have survey in the chat box. If you can drop it here, I can do that. You can fill it out for my future studies and for the future of the textile industry. And also Professor RG shared some of the inspirational Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channel links. Um, please follow them. Uh, this is, she has um, a series of lectures recorded and they're available on YouTube channels. I think that this is a great work of her, you know, putting these together, very inspirational and timeless. So if you could, um, add more, you're welcome to add Carolina or Professor RG. Thank you, Doc, um, um, Professor Kim, not Dr. Yet soon. Um, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Um, just thank you. very quickly, we wanna just tell you next um, Monday, February 28th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, the Luis Saida organization will present um, M-U-J-E-R, which stands for Media Used for Justice, Equity, and Respect. We will take some questions and comments first, and then um, just before we close, we'll tell you all about an open call um, uh, for artworks, which is open to all by all. Um, let's see, Carolina, you wanted to share a video? Yes, yeah, should I put the video now, uh, Miss Alice, from the uh, website? Sure, sure. <laughs> sure.
great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Carolina. This is incredible. I think what you need to add to your titles is polymath also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> These are great. I just wanted to say, I mean, it's not a question. It's actually a comment. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, our, I, I guess, the responsibility that artists should have right? We all have a responsibility um, to say something through our work. Designers are also artists. If designers, clothing designers, you know, uh, interior decorators use sustainable fabrics, right? Mm -hmm. Use these sustainable materials and made them chic, right? Mm -hmm. And, yep. and uh, that would change the mindset mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of everyone as right. long as they continue to create um you know these these beautiful handbags and coats mm -hmm. and you know leather mm -hmm. pants out of real materials people right. will keep buying because they have that status right once right. they shift then the mindset of the consumer will also shift right right that that's where i'm coming from so providing what's you know, sustainable is also important, you know, not just the consumers who are aware of the, you know, ethical production. I think the fashion industry, they should change as well, you know, faster than what consumers are the, asking. That's when the big change will happen, you know, for, right. for you know, big companies mm -hmm. to begin right. using and, and showcasing these. Yeah. Right. And I'm so, also seeing, you know, some of the major companies, top tier companies starting to bend farts, you know, as the first move. And this is very, you know, exciting that we are seeing the changes. And, you know, when I ask, you know, consumers who are regular cons consumers of the exotic leather, they say, you know, they're buying because it's the display of their wealth and this display of their um, taste. So once the concepts and you know their um, perceptions change, I mean, it doesn't have to be real animal skins. Right, right, and it's so beautiful. My goodness, it is so beautiful. <laughs> it's just the mindset that needs mm -hmm. to change. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it could be a luxury item if you right. market it right. as such, and that right. then will you know you'll you'll be in that wheel in that cycle that will mm -hmm. begin to create this change right um, any questions any comments i do believe um that the google forms takes you to a page that says you need permission at least on oh, my end. okay yes all right so i'll pro probably send it out later on um, yes please yes yeah i haven't figured it out <laughs> how to undo it but any, any questions, questions, any comments? Uh, my granddaughter who was on wanted to know, um, at what age should you start teaching this to children? Well, I think it could be any any age. I mean, this is pretty much easy to jump on, just like cooking. So, I mean, I use a lot of sustainable, sustainable materials that are found from kitchen. So, yes. I mean, yeah, I, I've... You know, I had a aunt showing me how to make candles when I was, you know, five, six. Wow. And I still remember, you know, this is pretty much the same thing, you know, cooking in the kitchen. So, right, yeah, right. you're welcome to jump in at any age. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions from the audience, from the participants here today? They're so quiet. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I will quickly share um, my screen um, and then I will um, hand it over to Carolina. Okay, you all see my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Artivism is holding an open call. It's a multi-venue exhibition. Uh, so far we have the Delphi University uh, gallery space. We have the OFIT gallery at Gottesman Libraries, Teachers College at Columbia University. There's the consulate of uh, Costa Rica in New York City. We have uh, the Center for Women of New York, which is in Queens. It's a great organization. Um, it empowers women. It offers many services to women. Um, and that's a Fort Taunton, Queens. Uh, we do have more that will be announced soon. Uh, there may be a web series coming out of um, Greece. 
uh, we're hoping for another out of Costa Rica, um, and possibly the um, Consulate of India in New York City. So if you'd like to submit your work, and it's open to all, to all ages, all disciplines, it could be visual arts, if it's anything large or sculpture, you can just, you know, take an image, create a QR code to a video, to audio, uh, to your website, and we will display that. Um, you need to submit by March 18th. Uh, you submit your work to our email, or if you want to learn more, at artivism at adelphi.edu. And it's how your work um, aims to transform society. So it's a pretty broad statement. It could be environmental. It could be just finding beauty in the world. It could be something that's more um, artivism powered. Um, it's however you define this. Carolina. Yes, thank you, uh, Professor Tim, for this excellent presentation and a comment or some, you know topic of conversation that we'd like to put on the table is, you know, how do you choose as a professional to take this route? Because you know um, you're talking about the fashion industry, and in the fashion industry, to take a stand as such could maybe lead your career in one way or another, right? So as a textile artist and being a designer also, how did you come about that resolution for your career path to be like, no, I'm not following the trends that are damaging the environment, animals, humans, right? I'm going to do the work, but very sustainable. And even though I might have to, you know, come up with new ideas, I'm willing to take the fight. Could you walk us a little bit about that? Uh, we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. <laughs> so you've seen the video that um, Karen and I just showed um, uh, right after the uh, presentation. And I mean, a lot of my uh, artworks were based off of textiles. And then I started to research into Korean aesthetics, which is, you know, always talking about sustainability and being practical. And you know, a lot of the historical artifacts are in fact, you know, very scientifically proven that it's working um, sustainably. So, I mean, I started to research some of the historical um, uh, archives and then I started to move into the sustainable, fa sustainable fashion, which was very natural because I was doing, you know, um, digital fabrication from St. Martin's like, um, since 20, 2008. So it was like, it was there, but I didn't even think these other career work because, you know, sometimes you just learn things that they sit there. But, you know, at teacher's college, I, I'm working as a studio fellow and I got some time to work alone. Um, and also, you know, uh, Textile Academy, this is an online, um, school that you can take courses on textile and digital fabrication, which was my initial inspire, inspiration. So taking those courses, you know, outside of uh, doctoral studies is, you know, it was very natural for me to, you know, dive into sustainable fashion. So for, you know, at Textile Academy, we see a lot of people from diverse, you know, community and diverse disciplines you know, industrial design, architecture, um, engineering, we have doctors, you know, you can see, you know, a lot of people coming from different perspectives, but then they're interested in sustainability and digital fabrication um, with, you know, playing with exploration with textile. So, I mean, you, you know, this interdisciplinary education thing is uh, huge right now and I think it's going to continue so I mean you don't have to study one um, major and be the expert of it the whole time whole career I mean um, current generation I don't think they're going to stay in one um, job for the rest of their lives so I mean you're welcome to try uh, exploring and learning all these different things outside of your discipline. I think that's helpful, you know, as you move forward. That's a wonderful advice. So to be open-minded in 
that nowadays uh, to be like Professor Art is uh, more of a polymath might be the way to move forward into career paths, right? Right, right. Yep, yep. Uh, another yes. thing that we usually ask our presenters is what will be one key takeaway from your presentation today for our audience uh, members into taking action? So um, a lot of my um, students in our class are educators already and they're preparing mm -hmm. to be an um, educator. And this course is based off of our education, art and our education department at Teachers College. So their, their um, undergraduate degrees are often from arts, BFAs and BAs. So I'm asking if um, educators, um, they could start their curriculum based off of, you know, so socially responsible curriculums, you know, incorporate that into your curriculum. That way, you know, you tell students what the problems are, you know, you could also figure out ways to, you know, come up with alternative ways to create substitutes, just like mine. And you do have something in the chat our fashion industry le leaders like LVMH, I, that might be Louis Vuitton maybe, mm -hmm. aware of the ramifications of overspending waste and the positive aspects of upcycling and shifting the scope from representation of wealth through product, but to acknowledge that fashion is modeling a way of being through branding and influencing the mindset of consumers that have the propensity to sustain the fashion house through the purchase of goods. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Are they Sorry. aware? I don't know. Um, I, I a few years ago, this is maybe a little bit off topic, but not so much. Um, Louis Vuitton had a Jeff Koons line mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. if you remember the the, the Masters series, where yeah. You know, we, mm -hmm. yeah, I found it appalling. It was just <laughs> my God, like to take something from an old master, whoever that old master mm -hmm. they were masters, right. uh, and taking something they created and putting it on a handbag and then throwing mm -hmm. his little bubble figure on there. So he had put his name along with the thing and selling them for thousands of thousands of dollars in limited edition. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. having them increase in value thereafter was, mm -hmm. ah, you know, <laughs> like really? But then mm -hmm. again, as long as there are people branding it, selling right. it, those mm -hmm. buying it, this cycle right. is not going to stop. Mm. Right, right, exactly. So it's so we see um, fashion houses moving towards sustainability. That's a good thing, but it's very slow. I think very still slow. slow, too slow. Yeah, too slow. It's, it's still it's, slow. If you take the rate of change and the rate of environmental. <laughs> hmm. Disasters and you know hmm. what's going on in, in, in our environment today it's still too far, you know, mm -hmm. it's two polar ends. One right, has right. to catch up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and yes. also, I mean, I've, I've been presenting to, you know, various audiences and a lot of people tell me after the presentation that they didn't even know where it's coming from, yeah. how it's made, you know, all this, you know, hidden truth. So, I mean, this is a great opportunity to go over um, some of the issues, current issues, and start thinking about the substitutes. And then you have individuals like Temple Grandin, right, who mm, studies right. animal behavior and, and mm. has found ways to, you know, do this in a more humane um, manner. Right. Um, so right. even that, because there will be those who will always prefer mm. leather goods, who will always be not or be vegetarian or vegan mm. or, you know, mm. uh, prefer that. Yeah. And that's fine too, right. at right. least to do it in a more humane fashion. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's for everyone. Yes. Who, yeah. Not just uh, animals, but, you know, human beings, every creature. Oh my God, yes. Yes. Okay, Carolina. Thank you again for this um, thought-provoking conversation, Professor Kim. And like you said, it's a, a step towards being mindful of our ways around. Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out to your class. Thank you for, for coming. <laughs> you. And we hope that 
in your curriculum also you start implementing the teachings of Professor Kim and all of her research, uh, you know, basing it on all these theoretic theory, theories and um, um, art educators uh, that have supported this way of thinking, as you posted on your presentation with the yeah. with those quotes. Um, so. One last round. Anyone else would like to make a comment, maybe from the class, from the audience? Anything to close up? I see a couple of move there's in the classroom. It's so cool to see the space back home there. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Um, what I do want to say is since your class are mostly those that are um, studying education and will be our future educators, is really, really promote this interdisciplinary approach to learning and mm -hmm. um, what they then do, right? It's not right, just... Right studying math or studying mm -hmm. science or studying art it's combining it all as being you know right. this well-rounded person and right. that you can take a little bit of everything and you don't mm -hmm. have to major in one subject test oh. out all the waters those exactly. first couple of years of you know when you're in high school your first year or two or three of college test out everything take courses and everything and mm -hmm. then narrow it down if you even yeah, have to exactly. narrow it down yeah exactly i mean try out is the best thing that you could ever do i mean i didn't even think that you know biofabrication digital uh, technology textiles could be in one artwork at all yes <laughs> you know when i was you know in college and now you're seeing everything combined and creating a whole different you know artwork and design so you never know where you're heading to. That's yeah. right. And also for the viewers of this um, presentation later on, as the consumer, you have so much power. So don't forget about that. Mm -hmm. I think right, right. exactly here that is like, you know, we're touching upon it from the uh, educator's perspective. You can do it also from a researcher's perspective. But as the mm -hmm. regular person, every time you go to buy something, that's your vote that is your mm -hmm. your voice yeah. and if you're uh, exactly. you know supporting products that go along the lines of hurting the animals still contaminating mm -hmm. the waters the soil causing mm -hmm. all these chemical situations with the people that work in the area you're right. supporting it if you buy those products right Meanwhile, exactly exactly if you go for more sustainable fashion or any other kind of items you know uh, for your everyday living you're part of the change and that's your way of taking action right so, right thank you thanks for um, wrapping everything up in one yes, sentence no, thank you professor uh, kim it's a pleasure and we hope to see you all next time remember as professor already said next monday we're going to have mujer by Lisa Aida, and uh, the series continues we also have that open call coming up it's already posted so we look forward to see your artworks coming through the email Right. Also, have a wonderful night. Um, and please share the call. Uh, if you're yeah. teaching high school or even elementary school, share with your students. Mm -hmm. All right, That'd everyone. Awesome. See you next time. Thanks again for All coming. Right. Thank you, Ms. Carolina. Thank uh, you, Professor thank RG. Thank you so much. Thank you, class. Let's thank hear it for, for Professor bye, bye. King. Come on, class. Hey, I see all the waving. That's how good. Thank you. <laughs> all right, <laughs> bye. Bye.